right guys uh, today we got another exciting video that I'm gonna share with you guys and it's uh, we we're focusing on uh, second order circuits um, pretty much like the last problem but now we're gonna be focusing on um, the resistive inductive and capacitive networks all mixed in one so a second order circuit uh, when we find out the uh, pretty much the equation of this overall circuit when the switch um, uh, turns on, uh, meaning that it's um, open, uh, we'll be able to determine um, the characteristic equation. And the characteristic equation will be a second order, which means that it will be a second derivative. Okay, so for this circuit right here, um, so we have an inductor, capacitor, and resistors, and uh, independent voltage supply of 12 volts. So when T equals zero, the switch is gonna be open, and we're gonna see what happens, and we're gonna see how to describe what is going on in um, the circuit. Okay, so let's look at when T um, is greater than zero, i.e. when switch is open. Okay. So when the switch is open, we could redraw the circuit. If we were to redraw the circuit, we would have the 3 ohm resistor here, 6 ohm resistor, the 2 Henry inductor, the one farad capacitor, the 12 volt voltage supply, and that's it. That would look, um, that would be the circuit when the switch opens. So, as we can see, that it's an open circuit in the middle since the switch is open. Therefore, there's no current um, flowing into the middle branches. So, no current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor, no current flowing through the 12 volt. Uh, voltage supply. So we could actually redraw the circuit um, and once we redraw the circuit it's going to look something like this. So you can pretty much get rid of the middle elements. We have the 3 ohm um, voltage, uh, sorry, resistor, 1 farad capacitor, and sorry that would be uh, to Henry inductor. Okay, so we're going to apply uh, KVL to this um, circuit here, and we're going to try to figure out um, how to describe the circuit. So if we were to do KVL, um, we would want to do the loop analysis. So looking from uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, uh, for this uh, problem, we're going to look at it um, clockwise. Okay, so to do KVL, um, we would say the voltage, oh, sorry, we would say the voltage of the capacitor plus the voltage in the resistor plus the voltage of the inductor equals zero. Okay, so the voltage in the capacitor, Vc, that's just equal to one over C, the integral from T naught to T of I x dx okay plus the current going through the resistor I mean sorry voltage um, across the resistor that's just equal to I T times the resistance which is 3 plus the voltage through the inductor that is just L di 
divided by dt, that equals to 0. OK, so what we could do is we could take the derivative um, in order to just get derivatives for this equation. So if we take the derivative for each um, element in this equation, we would end up with 1 over c. Take the derivative of this integral. That's just equal to i t plus the derivative of i t 3. That's just equal to 3 i t. And that's a first order derivative plus the integral of this derivative, which is already a derivative, which will end up being l i t and it will be a second order derivative and that equals to zero so as we can see this is a second order um, circuit um, because the highest order describing the circuit when the switch opens is a second derivative okay so we know c is equal to one and we know l is equal to two so let's just put that into the equation and that will end up being i t plus three i t prime plus two i double prime t that equals to zero. Now what we could do is we could uh, make i t equal to a variable, we'll say r. And when we do that, we end up with 2 r squared plus 3 r plus 1 equals to 0. OK, so this is a quadratic equation now. Um, when we have a quadratic equation equal to 0, we're able to find its roots. And the roots being um, from this equation end up being r oops, r is equal to negative 0 0.5 and negative 1. OK, so now since there is two real roots, um, this uh, second order derivative ends up being um, a case called uh, over damped. So over damped just means that the roots of the derivative or the second order uh, equation are two non-equal roots. Okay, so the the equation for um, it for an over damped case that is just equal to it is equal to a constant we'll say c1 e to the negative 0 0.5 t plus c2 which is the second constant e to the negative t okay so what we did was we put the roots um, in the exponents in the variable of the exponential function so this ends up being the solution to this problem when the switch opens when t equal uh, is greater than zero but we have constants here we have c1 and c2 so the the problem isn't solved yet we need to find the constants so in order to solve the constants or figure out the constants i mean we're going to have to play around when the switch is in steady state when t is less than zero and when we do that we're able to find one of the constants in order to find the other constant we're going to look at when t is, um, is great is equal to zero but just before when the switch opens okay so let's do that let's figure out what happens when the switch is, or sorry, the circuit is in steady state. So we'll say when t is equal to 
0, minus. So it's in steady state when the switch is closed. The circuit ends up looking like this, where we have the 3 ohm resistor, 6 ohm resistor, we have the 12 volt voltage supply, supply. Um, and then we have an open circuit, we'll say plus or minus a VC, because in steady state, a capacitor behaves like an open circuit. And then we have IL, because in, um, uh, in steady state, an inductor acts like a short circuit. Okay, so this is the equation when T equals zero minus. So we could see that since there is no current going through the three ohm resistor, that VC actually equals to zero volts. That's because when we look at this, side over here we have 12 volts and we know that the voltage drop is 6 volts so the overall voltage in VC is going to be 12 minus 12 which is 0. Okay so now let's look at IL. IL that's just equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So the voltage is 12 volts divided by the resistance, which is 6, which is the only resistor in the network. That comes out to 2 amps. Okay, so now we solve for, um, we solve for uh, what happens when the circuit is in steady state just before when the switch opens. Okay, so now let's look at T0 positive. So T equals zero positive. Okay. So when the switch opens up, what we could do is we could say the capacitor um, behaves like a voltage source, but um, the voltage across the capacitor is the same voltage we calculated when T equals zero minus. So this becomes zero, oops, this becomes zero volts. Connected to a three ohm resistor, connected to six ohm resistor. Now the switch opens, so this is an open circuit. We have the 12 volt voltage supply, and then what happens is we have um, the inductor behaves like a current source and that the current when we calculate it in T is equal to zero, the negative is equal to zero positive. So this becomes two amps. Okay, so now, since we did uh, since we did it from before, I'm not going to redraw the circuit. But now there's zero current going through the six ohm resistor and zero current going through the twelve volt voltage supply. That's because um, this the circuit isn't complete. So what we could do is we could do KVL of this loop like we did before. So let me just draw that out. So if we do KVL like that, the same process happens when we uh, did it from before. That's just equal to VC. Oops. So that's equal to VC plus VR plus VL. That's equal to zero. Now VC is zero, so we don't include it to the equation. Um, VR, so let's go back, 
that's just equal to the current times resistor. So the current is actually 2 amps times the resistor is 3. So 2 times 3. So we'll say 2 times 3 plus VL, which is 2, which is the inductor, DI 5 by DT. Okay. Um, that equals to zero. So what we could do is we could actually solve and isolate for di dt. So once we do that, di dt is equal to negative 3. And this is when t is equal to pretty much zero, um, technically zero positive. Okay. So now we have um, different, uh, different uh, uh, when current is equal to zero in different types of uh, derivatives. So we have di dt. So I'll just do that here. So we have di dt at zero. That equals negative three. And then we have i at zero, which is equal to Using these two initial conditions, we're able to solve for the um, constants. So if we were to do that, <coughs> i at 0, that's just equal to c1e to negative 0 0.5 at 0 plus c2e at negative 1 times 0 and that equals to 2. So that becomes C1 plus C2 is equal to 2. Now we have to take the derivative. If we take the derivative of I of t, that just becomes I of t, which is equal to negative 0 0.5 e to the negative 0 0.5 t plus negative 1 e oh sorry there's constants in front of here so let me just erase that so we have negative 0 0.5 c1 e to the negative 0 0.5 t minus 1 c2 e to the negative 1 t. Now i prime at t equal to 0. That's just equal to negative 0 0.5. And this, I won't do it again, but this becomes, um, this becomes uh, 1. This becomes 1, 2. So we have negative 0 0.5 c1 minus c2 that is equal to, which we calculated, um, let's see, over here, which is equal to negative 3. Okay, so now we have two equations, two unknowns. We have, here I'll just write it out clearly, we have um, C1 plus C2 is equal to 2. We have negative 0 0.5 C1 0.5 C1 minus C2 is equal to negative 3. So we have two equations, two unknowns, and if we solve it, C1 ends up being negative 2, and C2 ends up being 4. So if we put that into the equation, i of t ends up being negative 2e to the negative 0 0.5t plus 4e to the negative t. And that describes the current going through the capacitor in the original equation. So if we go back all the way to the original equation, 
this describes the current going through the capacitor and through the 3 ohm resistor. So what we did was we found um, the circuit uh, conditions at different times when t equals 0 negative and 0 positive. And then we're able to describe the circuit when t is greater than 0 or when the switch opens up. From there, we're able to find the um, we're able to find the constants which we got, and uh, when we found the constants, we're able to describe the current going through the capacitor and resistor. Perfect. So thank you for watching this video. This is just for an overdamped case. Um, the next two videos will demonstrate the underdamped case and the criti critically damped case. Awesome. Thank you for watching.